Okay, well, you're good to go. And uh, okay, you have to mute the output on this. It's going to be up here somewhere. That's the output here, right? Right, right, right. Oh yeah, you that. Okay, so now we have one uh, one output and one input. This little robot. Maybe key. We're gonna have to be over. Here. Maybe you just, at one point we're gonna bring that closer to you guys, right? Oh, to, to this is the speaker. That doesn't. That doesn't. That doesn't move. Have. Get another one though. Okay. But go ahead with what you've got here because I think they can hear you guys and they can see everybody through this guy. Okay. All right, so we're going to begin our arts and cultural um, meeting. I have a guest here, two guests, Keith Smith and William Morrison. Where are you? Go ahead. I'm going to bring a feeler out. Okay, you want to come over here? Check on it. Yeah. Great. You're way out there with the tiny team. You could be really close. Oh, fun. Uh -oh. So closer you can be as handsome as me. Yeah, oh, wow. <laughs> Amazing. Where did, oh, great. Where did Will go? Sorry. Oh, here. Oh. Oh, no worries. What is the all right? Have you the agenda? Was it sent on uh, it, it is, but it's like really short now. It's gonna be him, and then Susan um is gonna walk us through the change at the institution. We're gonna go from arts and in institution to arts and culture. He has some insight what that means, and we'll talk about that. That's a big change. And then we're going to see how that's going to reshape our, what we, we want to work on. where institution's going to go? Business, for some reason. I don't know the logistics in that. It's funny, SLA once upon a time used to be called business. So it's not, is it, was it called business? So we, we back in 2000, for a few years. So we'll see, like, you know, that, that'll, sure. that'll change a little bit of like, what is open for us to work on that's different from before. She may explain to us, like, or tell us why it went to business. That wasn't really, but anyways, go ahead, Key. So we want to know about this. Um, oh, so, and, and yeah, so. Do you want to come here? Sure. Yeah, 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 come on in. Yeah, so um, a little a little less than a year ago, Will Morrison uh, put together and is spearheading an initiative to get public art in Washington Square Park. Um, so I think I got really excited about this. I own a, an art gallery in the Lower East Side. I grew up in the neighborhood. I grew up on Second Street, um, and I actually have the honor of being on the committee that is kind of the first round of choosing artists that uh, feel appropriate for the project. And so Will has actually put together already, there's five dedicated sites in the park that have already been kind of pre-approved by, by parks to house these temporary sculptures. Um, this sculpture, the timeline is kind of in the uh, late fall to early spring months. Um, I think it'll be November to March and through April. through April. And so that'll be the the timeline of when those sculptures will be able to be um, kind of had and enjoyed in, in Washington Square Park. Of course, because they're public sculptures, there are certain limitations uh, to make sure that they're you know, in compliance with safety and, you know, understanding that a lot of traffic goes through the park and we want to make sure that the the sculptures can be enjoyed but aren't um, any type of liability. So there are certain guidelines around that and 
you know, one of them being that it's a thousand pounds and certain kind of logistical things like that. And then basically we're openly accepting applications at this time. Um, and I think one of the things that I've seen a little bit when I floated the idea to some artists is pretty much across the board, everyone's really excited about the, um, about the idea of having, having art in the park and um, kind of integrating the public sculpture into the programming. Um, I think that because of the size and certain limitations, I, I think that certain, certain of the artists are having a little bit of trouble kind of like figuring out how that looks uh, logistically as far as like funding around getting in a thousand pound sculpture into a, a site specific location for um, somewhere between two and four months. And I think in general, I'm really excited to kind of start seeing the first wave of, of applications. Um, the, we'll be kind of going through the applications and then there'll be kind of a further approval process after that. Um, but we'd love to kind of, this has kind of gotten the okay to get going whenever the applications are appropriate and come in. And um, yeah, I'll open up. If anyone has any quick questions before I keep on explaining. I have a question. Um, so are you working with, with parks, with the Arts Department and Parks to do this? Solid yeah. will explain that, yeah. So, and then my second question would be about, so who approved it and, and where's the funding? Sure. So I'm, I'm here to support uh, one of the panel members. I think it's great. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And the, and I don't want to, I want to clog key because when, when the parks came up with this idea and I worked with the arts and antiquities division on this. And so just a little bit, I'm the administrator of Washington Square Park. So I run, I run the park. Basically. What's your name? Yeah. Will so, Morris. Oh, you're Will. I am. And now, uh, Will I? <laughs> uh, the, and so the, you know, so I don't want, I, I, he on his own volition, brought, you know, had a conversation with Ivy. So I don't want to, yeah, I want to applaud this effort. You know, this is the whole purpose of this committee was to, you know, make it so that folks that are in this community are excited about this project and are bringing it to the attention of the community to try and garner support. But to answer your question, it's, it's a, um, it is hand in hand with the Parks Department. It is in fact led by the Parks Department. And it is similar, it's akin to what occurs on the Park Avenue malls. So there's a public committee that's a sub layer before the actual art in the park process. So the committee is made up of a number of neighborhood institutions and community um, or two has a spot on it, but it, it is currently unfilled um, for this season, but we're doing, we're, we re-up in August. Um, so I'll be reaching out to now Susan um, to see who would wanna be on that, uh, fill on that spot in the committee. But it's essentially, a number of neighborhood institutions, and I wanted to make sure to have young emerging galleries as part of that um, to, to be part of, you know, what would be looking at and reviewing proposals that come our way. But in terms of money, there is none. Okay. Much like the public art process writ large across the city, the Parks Department receives proposals from artists who already have funding. So there's no fiscal component to this whatsoever. Is there funding? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. And I'm happy to help in any way. I've known the curatorial committee at Madison Square Park for many years, very closely with Brooke. Can you introduce, yeah, can you introduce yourself? I'm Casey Gargan, and I'm an arts writer in trail. And I also did. I've done art projects um, with the Parks Committee and right. uh, with Green Below 14. We sure. a woman's name who I know who did, did from Arts and Antiquities. Yeah. Oh, Elizabeth. Yeah, Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did a project in Hudson River Park um, with them. And so, uh, I'm, and I think it's fantastic. I think it's really great. Congratulations on taking the initiative. That was good. I'm happy to help in any way. Yeah, so the liability stuff is going to be through the park, though, right? So you said the liability? Well, it says like, like were you. The, the overall process, yes, is through the Parks Department. So essentially what this this serves, this, this gives the community, the, the organizations that are on this committee that represent the community, to the opportunity to look at it before it even gets to the Parks Department. So a past criticism of some commercial activations that have been in the park in the past is that the community didn't felt, feel like they had enough of a say in whether they liked it or not. Um, so you know, you're whether, here. 
So I'm here. So, so we're here making sure that, that, that everybody's voice can be heard before it even gets to the park depart, parks department store. And so if this community's purpose is essentially to review the proposals as they come in and essentially give a thumbs up or thumbs down to arts and antiquities, which is the NYC parks division that would actually engage with the artists as part of the proposal process. And that process is one that I'm, I can't say I've been around for CB2 when you've done one in this, in this neighborhood, but I'm sure it's happened in the past, um, but it's a full blown process where they have to submit all kinds of structural documents, you know, project details to the agency who vets them. There's a liability, you know, there's, a, there's an agreement as part of it, but then as part of that approval process at the parks department, it then comes back to whatever community it's going to be in through the community. So this would circle back to the community board in the form of a formal from uh, presented by Arts and Antiquities in conjunction with this committee and the artists and whoever is representing them um, at a, what I believe is a full board meeting, if not first state parks and waterfront committee meeting followed by. And then only after that would it actually go into the board. Right, I think that the way, I think the way at one point when you guys are ready to present it goes to the parks. They Correct. read it and then they make a, a resolution and then go to the full board. It's not a resolution isn't the right word. It's just that the they well no, they the as part of the parks approval process, they would reach out to the community board to go in front of the community board to get the community board's approval. I recognize Yes. It's a process. This process <laughs> takes this process can take up to a year. It's not a it's not a simple thing because again, it's not a single day event. Like, you know, we just had World Refugee Day in the park, and then they painted a mural in Garibaldi Plaza on some painted canvas. But that's in and out in a single day, and that's a special event. That's a different thing. This is this is you're talking about something that would be in the park for a month, maybe two, you know, depending on how how many proposals are are uh, received. Yeah, I would say right up front, I would suggest it might be better to have them up for longer because they're expensive to do. It's going to oh, be really yeah. proceed it. Yeah. It's going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. I and so if, if it were me, I would suggest you do a longer term. You should we should have a formal however long it takes for approval. We I do have to be cognizant of the heavy use of Washington Square Park right. throughout the year. Um so at least you know this the way this committee and these guidelines stand now, the applications are only accepted for the periods of November to April. So in the less comparatively busy months for the park. Right. Um, but then within that, you know, it's up to the it's up to the artists themselves, you know, whether they would want for the max time from November to April um, or just for a month or two. Maybe they have somewhere else they're taking this outdoor sculpture next, for example. Um, but a lot of that would come down to the details of the submitting artists. Is there um, doesn't Washington Square Park have the equivalent of the um, Madison Square Park Conservancy? Yes. And are they interested in helping to fund this project? So I'm also the executive director of the Washington Square Park Conservancy. And this is separate from that. The the yes. So there is a community. Washington Square Park Conservancy has a community arts grants program, but that traditionally has been more geared towards programming in the park. So like, if you have a special event application, let's say you know the Washington Square Music Festival, which is actually in in an hour, um, is one of our grantees um, on that side of things. But because this is new, this is new since I've been at the park. So there hasn't been a historical record of the Conservancy funding this because it's so new. Um, and that we don't have a, on the Conservancy side, there's not a specific program to fund, the, to fund art sculptures. In the park. Uh, okay, so I understand that you play a dual role. Yes. How do you divide? How does one know which shoe you're wearing at which time? For instance, right now you are representing Parks, parks Department. Correct. But you also represent the conservatives. Yes. But you get paid yes. for both of them. And how do you divide yourself? What if the conservancy is not in agreement with what the parks department is doing, vice versa? How do you divide this person? That is a very great, that's a great question. On this, uh, in this, this was created before I was in the dual role. So I created this when I was just the administrator of the park on the public side. And the Conservancy does have a member on this committee that's not me. I'm actually not on this committee formally. The committee's made up of a representative of uh, NYU, the association, the Conservancy, uh, a representative from galleries, key, 
at the community board and there, there, there are a few others that invitations were extended to, but they weren't filled for this year, um, but we will keep reaching out to them when this turns over each year. Um, but in terms of dividing my time, it really depends. Your thoughts. My thoughts. The, I mean, the conservancy is not at the present moment engaged. It's not part of the conservancy's mission to focus on public arts cultures in the park. So in this, in that sense, my role here remains purely as the park administrator. And the, and the conservancy is but a member of the panel. And that member, it's, it's usually a board member, at least it is this year, would like any other member of the panel provide their thoughts. And then it goes to the arts and antiquities division. It doesn't go to me. I hope that answers so, the question. You look like you have a lot of questions. No, I just had one. Well, so the conservancy would not be involved in making a decision or they would be? They would be involved in the same way that any other member of the panel. So there's there's someone from the conservancy filling a very similar role with the same role as myself as someone that is kind of the first round of looking at these applications and that person is not Will. Right. So that's another board member in that same committee um, that's that's sitting in a similar position as me. Right. They use the CB2 also will. So for example, so we can play a hypothetical, right? So let's say an artist submits a proposal. There's five active members, just keeping things hypothetical, five active members on the committee. The conservancy is just one of those votes. So if the conservancy is for or against it, there are four other people that get to cast their opinion on the same level. And then whatever that end result is, whether it is yay or nay, that is what's given over to the park administrator and the arts and antiquities division. And then we would go with that decision, whether it is a positive or a negative. Does that make sense? I know that the uh, conflict of interest board decided, for whatever reasons, I really don't know the details, but that they decided that it wasn't a conflict for you to have played both roles. That's correct. And, and could you tell us a little bit about that? I'm just curious well, because you come here uh, to uh, help him get this yes. proved. Well, we're veering in, well, I think we're veering more into a parks and waterfront committee meeting, but in terms of the conflicts of interest, you're, you're asking about why they would support that? Why do they, why do they think that it's not a conflict for you to play both roles? Well, I can't speak on behalf of the conference. No, but they gave a decision, right? They did, and you, and that's a public document that you can read. Um, but the no, I haven't read it, so that's why I'm asking yeah. you. Well, in my in in my position, this was a pre-established role that predates me by about eight years. So when I became the administrator of the park, the it, it is also the next step is to become the executive director of the conservancy because it's a previously pre-approved dual role, also with the community board resolution in support of it. So in my case, you know, that all of that decision making about the complex of interest board and the original uh, uh, institution of the dual role predates predates my time here. And so in from my perspective, when I came here and before I was here, I spent, I was in marketing and special events at the parks department and I worked with numerous dual role administrators across, across the city and they are all approved by the same conflicts of interest board. So to me, it was the logical next step. Um, and it's, and I had the great opportunity to be appointed to it by my parks commissioner and then by the board of directors of the conservancy. And so I accepted, um, I don't know if that directly answers your question, but that's, that's my purview to it. Um, and they don't, you know, they, and at the, you can, again, it's a public document, you can see that the stipend that comes with the position is weighted two thirds, one third. So the primary responsibility, reporting responsibilities always remain in the city. Um, park, the parks, so the parks department. department, correct. So how do you, uh, do you think that it will be an occasion where uh, you may feel that the, the parks department is not going to be in favor of a particular application? while the conservancy may want that. If that's the case, then I would have to go with the parks department because at the end of the day, again, the way this is structured, the representative of the conservancy on this committee has the same vote as everyone else. And then it comes to simultaneously, me as the park administrator and arts and antiquities. So we would both see that decision, yay, you know, one way or the other, and I can't override that. In my public capacity or as an executive director. 
So the, the aim is to be the executive director of the conservancy. What do you mean? That's your aim? No, I already am the executive. You are the executive director of the conservancy. Correct. And, and you, your title with the Parks Department again? I am the administrator of Washington. Administrator. Thank you. No problem. All right, so bringing conversation back to this specific yeah. part of yeah. I have a couple of just questions to make sure I understand it correctly. Yeah. So the members of the committee are NYU, you as representative no. of no. the Conservancy. No, there's, there is another member that sits on the board of the Conservancy that has the same voting power as myself and the uh, aforementioned NYU so representative. It's not on the committee. No, okay, so I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so somebody from the Conservancy. So, yes, yeah. a representative. You, Myself. A, a TBD community board. Here. So yes, you. it was extended last season. Um, there wasn't there wasn't somebody who was available to accept. Right. That, so we, there will be. Yeah. Yes, that's great. Well, I don't know if it's it's it was when I sent it over. It was up to uh, the leadership community board to determine who would sit on the committee, and they there wasn't anybody available at the time. Uh, this was a year. ago. Okay, so somebody from the conservancy, somebody from the community board, yep. somebody representing NYU, yep. and then the fifth person will be a gallerist? There was a gal, so Gat Key is the gallerist. Yeah. Oh, you're the gallerist. Yeah. Okay. And then there was someone from the association. Number five is who? Someone from the Washington Square Association, ah, the neighborhood okay. organization. And there was someone from the Village Alliance. Six. You were saying the five was a hypothetical. That yeah, the, high, the five was that hypothetical. Oh, okay. yes, there were. I mean, I extended invitations to the, you know the New York Studio School to. Uh, uh, oh man, I'd have to go back and look at that. Okay, so the number. No, it's it's a it's, number. It's just a represent a cross section of representatives. Correct. Represent and I work with my colleagues in arts and antiquities each season to figure out you know we extend the things to who would have the capacity to serve. It's not a very heavy lift right now because we haven't received any proposals. Right. But if the if the you know if there were a time where there really were you know if we were really buying for space, which I hope to get to, I really do. Um, you know, then then as it develops, you know, we'd have to figure out who has the time to serve on. Okay. Such so it's not perfect. Got it. Yeah. Like who's the representative of the association? Uh, Judy Paul. Judy Paul. And who? Uh, it's our. It's Shannon Wu. Would say, and, and are these art people? Or are they curators? They at this at this preliminary juncture, it was really just who was interested, you know, who has an interest in the arts, you know, and who has time. This, this is very early days. Applications then will have their first screening through the committee. Correct. Then the committee will select X number of worthy things that need that hit all the marks. And then those will go to the parks department. parks department, who will specify that they go to arts and antiquities within the parks. Department. And we need a flow chart. Yes, you're you're uh, you're making one step more complicated than it needs to be. When it goes to the parks department, it will just go immediately to the arts. And okay. I'm just trying to get the whole. Yeah. So arts antiquity and antiquities then. Uh, filters out some and gets it reduced to a smaller number, assuming there's luxury. No, oh, okay. No, I understand. I understand the comment. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's before yeah. That's this, this process does not pit any artists against one another. Okay. At all. Oh, so, so <laughs> the all this does is if an, if an artist is interested, they submit it. And the, the committee just votes on whether they like that project or not. Ah, okay. And if they so like not. it, then it goes to the parks department. And the parks department can be like, okay, that's great. We love that you love this idea, but your idea isn't feasible. And so we can't do it. that are feasible and approved by arts and antiquity are the ones that. No, it has nothing. There's no number. There's no first five. There's no. There's none of. It's not a first come first serve type of situation. We'll be we'll be looking at a lot of applications. And as we look at applications, I think the, the very first round of screening will be just logistically if they're following the guidelines. Right. As long as they're following the guidelines, then we can make more aesthetic choices or more conceptual choices to see what makes most sense to actually put into, into the park. 
And so that's, and that's kind of like this committee is filtering out a little bit and going over kind of some logistical things and making sure it's like right. technical boxes. Then we, yeah, exactly. And so then when it gets to parks, they're not going through in theory, all these applications, some of which are eligible, some of which are not and stuff like this. So we're just kind of like the, the first line of, um, of screening for this part. So like, just speak. And it goes to our tenant too. Right. And how will they review? So they review them through a robust, long, you know, long process um, that is well established at Arts and Antiquities. And if I, if I, if this had come on my radar screen a little bit sooner, I probably could have mustered someone from Arts and Antiquities to come, and we can do that, you know, if uh, down the line. I don't want to speak. like about the project. Yeah. So I mean, and that's the point of this: this is to get it out, this word out, you know, from this Society. in this community. And uh, I think it is, it, yeah, yeah. I, I just want to please remind us, yeah. what exactly is your role? Who do you represent today? I'm representing uh, myself and I'm representing kind of like, I would say of the committee Which that has committee? been put together. Which committee? This is the committee that is reviewing this, um, these applications. One of the five people here, five entities or more than. A, more yeah. Than. So it's like, we're, we're the first kind of round of looking at. There are a lot of people that are more directly um, tied to community like this. And then I'm kind of representing art and also representing art from a standpoint of, I grew up on Second Street and I know this community very well. So you it's like, gallery. I have a gallery on Rivington, I've had a gallery on Fourth Street, on Third Street, uh, T. Smith Gallery. So, um, so, so I'm, I'm currently kind of, one of the acting members of this committee that is more uh, specialist of art, whereas the others are are kind of um, representing from a little bit more of a community standpoint. Yes. So I think it's like it's important with this committee. I think one of the exciting parts about it is it's looking at these projects from a few different views, and it's important to kind of like you know both have um, kind of a professional arts opinion, but also make sure that, you know, there's the opinion of NYU, which is very uh, close to here and, um, and here. a few other members, which is literally right here. <laughs> From, and, um, yeah. Back to the sort of uh, order of operations yeah. here. So then once it's at arts and antiquities, yes. then it, they will say, be, be favorably disposed to a certain number of, Yes. Well, so it's again, it's on an application by application basis. But if it crosses, if it checks all of the internal boxes, then part of the formal parks approval process is that it goes in front of the community board. So once the once parks says, oh, this project, it meets all the all yeah, it's heavy parks. enough, it's it's dirty enough, you know, all that. Right, but you um, pre-screened anyway. Right. Right. Um, then it comes back to the community. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Then we'll be so happy. And we'll, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and there isn't, so my last um, kind of sequence thing yes. has to do with the fact that there, so there's a lot of variables, right? Simultaneous variables, because Absolutely. who knows how many people are going to apply, how many of those people sure. will, especially, you know, particularly with the, I'm given sure. that there isn't money and that they've got to have funding for elsewhere. So, you know, Assuming that there is a, an embarrassment of riches here and that there's several really worthy yeah. projects, um, it's unclear, I guess, whether those works will be uh, mounted sequentially or simultaneously, depending upon the length of time that somebody deems that each of the yeah. projects should be in the park. So that that's the that's it again. The we answer to your question is yes. Yeah. The, yeah. Here, hold on. the answer to your question is yes, they could be sequential or simultaneous. It all depends upon how many artists are submitting proposals right. in a given length of time. And that, you know, there are there are professionals in the arts and antiquities division who do this writ large across the city, who essentially schedule, you know, these art installations across the five boroughs. So in the case of Washington Square Park. I would rely on their professional opinion, you know, as the Arts Antiquities Division is to. Arts Antiquities would determine the length. How many? Of time how many makes sense given? That, yeah. 
there's inner logic there and it's very much like it's very much like the park avenue malls for those who are familiar with that where they have one or two depending on the season right. other parks that have large scale pardon me large scale public art in them there is always an underlying logic to them and it is the arts and antiquities division of many organizations that they work with who define that okay. for parks great thanks for clarifying yeah. see um a park associate association the washington square park association do they have a voice here? The Washington Square Association, yes, they have their on the panel. One person. One person is on the panel. Correct. That's Judy Paul? Correct. Yeah. Do you have and, any questions? And then there's also there's five locations. So it's very possible that you know different artists are showing at the same time um, across those locations. Yeah, it's an and the psychic it. Yeah, so it's, it's publicly viewable on the Park Spark website. And Mark has a Mark and Ivy put up a yeah, there's the email linking to the same thing so that you can see. I do have a question. How long has it been out? That, this and, this is, the, 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 yeah, uh, how long of a period have we not had any application? Almost a year. But mainly because, you know, the, the I set this up in conjunction with Arts and Antiquities because they're, you know, for such a, a coveted public space like Washington Square Park, I felt the need for there to be a community level group. And so at Arts and Antiquities, you know, as long as there were, there was buy-in from the community and at the time there was to start this. Now, since then, we haven't really marketed it all. It's just kind of been there waiting for projects, you know, the woodwork, because for example, you know, in 2008, I Way Way came, this is way before my time, but there was, a, there was that installation under the arch um, back in 2008, and there was no process like this for the community to essentially say whether they were in favor of it or not. It went directly to the Parks Department, and I believe at the time, you know, City Hall. Um, but the, so the function of this really, it wasn't, the goal here is not just to flood the place with art. The goal is to set the, you know, the guardrails, so to speak, or the infrastructure in place so that if and when it does occur, because it's Washington Square Park, eventually we will get art proposals, people love art and, and doing it in Washington Square Park, that there is something in place to handle it in a way that makes sure that the community voices are being heard. Um, and that, you know, it's, it's really geared locally for this, this community, which I thought made sense. Well, and, you know, and you, because Key has like, has like a separate kind of like gallery that is targeted to younger people in some ways. And I think like that, that amplifies the project. No, that's a good point. I mean, that's me. Yeah, like my so his role on the committee fulfills the emer you know emerging local village wider village because he's East Village based you know artist bucket. But that's not to say that there couldn't be more, and that's not to say that he's always going to be on the committee. All of the committee seats turn over. Uh, this is just the representation this year. Yes. <laughs> Are you worried that? Are you, are you at all worried that no one will have the means to apply? You know, I'm, I have to believe that there will come a, a crossing of paths where there will be the, the right idea with the right funding that meets the specs, honestly, that's like a, a big part of this, you know, and a big part of art and parks in general is that it has to be able to withstand being a public park for, for you know, outside in the elements for a given period of time. But yeah, I believe that. I mean, it's it, you have to look around the city and see all of the wonderful examples of art and parks like to believe that it's possible. So you guys have been in conversations with how the Highline puts up all this stuff there? I have not been in direct communication with them. I have mostly, for thus far, been engaged with our Arts and Antiquities Division. But I know they do. I did see like more and more. Yeah. When do you anticipate needing to start marketing? Uh, it is on a rolling basis. To be honest, you know, as an as an administrator and as an executive director, you know, there's there's a lot going on, um, and the you know that's part of why. Like, and again, I applaud Key because I, he told me about this yesterday. And I'm here supporting him because you know he may he went on his own volition as one of the committee members went and had a conversation with Ivy and got this here. Um, I am not you know it is it is at, it is not my agenda to push this upon folks. It is it is again it is there so that when this happens the the process is in place for it to have 
as much community input as possible. And I, and I do rely, you know, uh, on my committee members to spread the word and I hope the other ones are doing so too. For, I mean, for us to even know about a project like this in, in this phase is, is like such a privilege because, you know, otherwise we get to hear when, when it, when there's, you know, when there's conflict. Well, that's nice of you to, that's nice of you to say. That's nice of you to say, and I really hope that this helps spread the word and potentially garners interest in getting some proposals to come actually come across the doorstep. So I want to circle back to you, an email just to have like this chart just to, that in my report that I have it correctly because a lot of this, is, I mean, would see really well for us, but I'm very new here, so I don't know. What to do. We have a weekly or more or less weekly um, e blast to about 4,000 people, mostly in the village. Great. When you're ready, um, so we have the committee of courses. I would be happy to put a link to a flyer or to an RFP if that's the right process or whatever it is. So keep us in mind. And Thank you, Mark. As soon as it's been approved by uh, the board, um, whatever the form that approval takes, I'm not um, And I'd be happy to facilitate that as part of the outreach. Okay. It's a good way to do outreach to approve the gallery because then they'll find the artists will have funding in order to be able to they can get funding from the gallery. It's great. It's, you should get a lot of proposals. I hope so. I hope once the word is out, yeah. it becomes more of a, of a problem of choosing proposals rather than getting them in the form. Are your friends at the uh, Not at this juncture. Again, you know, that I set this up and, and it has been, um, we have been, it has been, it is nascent. Let's call it. Is the concept to favor local artists? Yes. And it says that in here. I think New York based. Sure. Yeah. And a lot of her, like with this active studio practice in New York. Well, I think it's really good that you guys came in because also our parks person, we, we have a chair and co chair. And, you know, they're huge art and park want to get things done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Suzanne is also part of the park stuff, the whole thing. So, that's a lot of energy that people would be like excited to to like support. I will forward. likely be at the next Parks and Water Committee meetings. And that I've been here talking to you guys, I'll probably add it to my uh my next check in yeah. that as well. I think Susanna that would be like you you probably get a lot of support because all the stuff that's been Susanna there. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. So. so thank you for coming while well, you're still kind of putting wheels on the box a bit. That's really with you and I'm very um you know, appreciate it that you're looking at the community board in at this point in your process because, you know, we've had many situations where something was a fait accompli and then what happens is that there's a lot of community pushback and there's nothing that one can do, you know. So really thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. See, we'll see a lot of you hopefully. Yeah. You and you can you can see me anytime you come to Washington Square Park. My <laughs> office is right in the park. Yeah, you can come back on the oh, that, that's such a great thing to, for me to know because a lot of the stuff is like the community, you, it, it's a two-way thing. Sometimes everything's so foreign and untouchable and un, un, unconnectable, but only being in the space is that you could do that. No, anytime. Come, come stop by and I'll give you my card after. Okay. Great. If we uh, finish with the discussion about the art project, um, can we discuss about the park and what's going on in the park and the laws that are being broken and probably at another enjoy? time when it's officially on the Yeah, I would hate to, I would I would hate you're there, right? I am there. Um, but I would hate to co-op an arts and institutions committee meeting. No, no, just quick, quickly. Hope things get better. That's what I'm saying. Well, thank <laughs> you. They have to get better. To make sure things get better. Are you in the parks? Towards it every day. So now you know that I am not a sign. Everything up. Let me know about yeah. you anyway. It'll be so nice. It'll be great. Yeah. Oh, it's changing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. No, this thank you. So awesome. I'm excited. I think it'll be great. It'll be really fun and I'm yes. excited. There are five different locations. It's really exciting. So we have their contact information in our 
Uh, we will have Wills in a second. Yes, I, I have Keith. Yeah. yeah, I already sent the email with Keith information. Okay. But I'm gonna, you know, circle back with we'll, 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 we'll Will about having a chart of the community. You know, yeah, and we can email back um, all the committee members and all this type of stuff like this. So. Yeah, I'll put so you guys in an email days. together. Does the association have any relevance in the park anymore? Um. Of course, they do. You know, they have the holiday lighting every year. They have the Washington Square Music Festival, which starts in an hour that the that they support <laughs> as does the conservancy. <laughs> uh, and they have a chess final every fall. Is that going to stay with them, or are they being um, swallowed up by no. conservancy? That I, I think that's a rumor. The there there nothing changes uh, with their programming anymore. So. I, in fact, their their uh, music festival starts on. Yeah, we, we should finish our meeting so we can go there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again. No, I'll circle it's... back. That was so great. Thank you for coming. No problem. No, thank you guys. Thanks Susan so much. Can't there our chair? Oh, great! I've yet to meet Susan in person. Hi. Hi. Just listening in the background. I'm, I'm learning. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, have a great night. Thank you again. So. We're gonna like do business here. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah, you so much. For business. Yeah, we can. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. oh, thanks so much for having us. Okay. Yeah, thanks. So great to meet you guys. It's our first institution. Uh, you know. Oh, really? Fun. And, and if any of y'all want to come by the gallery at any time, uh, we're located at 170 Forsyth. It's right on the on Forsyth and Rivington, right across from uh, Sarah D. Roosevelt Park. And we're open 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Wednesday through Sunday. I'll put so, it in our email. Yeah, yeah, swing, swing by. We'll have, a, we'll have the current exhibition up till this Sunday, and then we'll be closed for a week for install the install. Um, and then have the work, exhibition. Work, work. Up. But amazing. Great to, great to meet you guys. I'm going to go this way. Nice to meet you. We have the agenda, and I don't even remember where it is. So, um, should we, uh, for the next thing, talk about the change of? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's right. Sure. Sure. Is it a good time? You should like go bother me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is people looking at talking to me? Yeah. So we wanted to um, have the conversation about the change of uh, arts and culture. I thought about that so that we can then have a, you know, kind of guide us like what options, how we should think. And um, well, it's not really, I mean, it's, I'm happy to, to discuss this with you. Um, you know, it's, it's my prerogative to change it, but I wanted you to be able to focus on arts and culture. You know, the, combination of arts and institutions is misleading because while I think it's true the institutions component included arts institutions it actually is much broader than that and includes all entities that constant that are sometimes excuse me excuse the background but constitute all entities that qualify as institutions in the sense that they are not-for-profit um, presences in the community. They can be an, a, an arts institution like the Whitney, but they can also be an educational institution like NYU or a social service institution like Greenwich House or Houses of Worship, or it's really a kind of a a sort of a, a combination and it doesn't really it, it 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 sort of gets hidden because people see arts with it and it's not it, but you know in the years past it wasn't actually grouped with arts and i think it's too important especially the you know the strengths of the chair of this group to you know to keep them together so what I want to focus on in terms of those institutions is got to do with the impact, the shared concerns has to do with the impact that it has. 
So when we deal with NYU, we're looking at issues like their construction, their taking over of public space, the impacts that they have on their neighbors. You know, this is not something that is what a group that's focused on arts and culture would do. What I want you folks to do is focus on what you've been doing and talking about. Now, of course, it can include institutions that are art related, but it's not veering off into all of these other areas. So in fact, as I mentioned that historically, institutions was not something that was paired with arts. I forget how many years ago, maybe it was five, six years ago that this happened. So I'm sort of, I've now paired the institutions component with economic development because of the impact issues. And I want to keep, I want you to just have the freedom to do what you focus on. Susan? Yeah. I, I can offer some historical insight that's very, very ratifying to what you decided. Because the art, this committee got founded because of me. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, Brad Holman was the uh, chair of CB2 at the time. So when was that? Was that 2008, 2009? Let's see. Um, before Janine was Carter, and before Carter was David, and before David, I think, was Brad. So yeah, something like that. That sounds right. right. So what happened was uh, the, the financial crack happened, and everybody was scared that there was going to be great repercussions at the arts, so it's going to be cut to nothing. And David Diamond at the time was the chair of the arts committee of the Chelsea Community Board. And I don't remember who was the chair of the arts committee at the East Village Community Board, but Crystal Field was on the board at the time. So I was a little bit plugged in through hearsay that way. And CB2 did not have an arts committee. So I, and I heard that David Diamond was coordinating with the CB, with the East Village Board on what to do if certain things happen and what they could do so that the community boards could speak with the United Voice. And we weren't gonna be in the dialogue. So I heard about that because I, I know David through La Mama because I had been the press agent of La Mama and David is, was the partner of Frank Carucci, the chairman of the board of La Mama. So David and I were, were on you know, speaking terms. Uh, and uh, so I, Brad, called me to a meeting and I explained the situation. I thought we should be in on the dialogue because we could at least, you know, be, I didn't want to be left out. At the time I wasn't, uh, at the time I was a public member of the, of the Waterfront Committee because I'd been recruited to the Waterfront Committee by Arthur Schwartz because he wanted to have some voice for the arts on the questions that were coming up with Pier 40. So David, and I met at a coffee house, a coffee shop, and he told me that he thought of setting up the Arts and Institutions Committee as Arts and Institutions because a lot of NYU stuff was coming up, and he wanted to put that in the hands of an experienced guy, and he had David Gruber, and he thought David could handle the arts along with it, and that would put it in the strong hands of someone, an experienced guy. But I agree with you that it was an unnatural mating of those two uh, uh, concerns. It was only because David Gruber was available. So, so you're, you're taking us back. Yes, he was the chair at the time because we were dealing with all this NYU stuff. You know, sometimes this happens when a specific situation causes people to like focus on the bigger picture from a very narrow perspective. And when dealing with NYU, sometimes everything starts to like become truncated and you're just thinking about how do I deal with NYU? And, but in looking at what this, what you folks have been doing and looking at your agendas, it's like you are an arts group and that's what you should be putting your energies into and, and you know, deciding what that means. I mean, this is, this is CB2, arts can mean anything, but there's enough there that it shouldn't be hampered, you shouldn't be hampered by that extra, that the baggage of institutions. I think that it's 
would get you away from what your mission should be. Yes. With, with, yeah. I, raised my, I raised my hand. Um, it's Kristen, also a public member who served uh, for a number of years. I think it's really helpful to have the arts and culture focus exclusively, because I do feel there have been meetings that have taken up a huge amount of time that are around NYU construction issues, which it's always been unclear to me about why this committee is the one that has purview over that, because it doesn't relate to a lot of the issues that we address. So I think it's a really helpful reframe. And I think if NYU is doing an arts project, of course, that'll come in back in under our exactly. category. Exactly. But, but, but we don't need to spend our time talking about this, I don't think it's useful for this group to, it's, someone should spend their time, but I always found it confusing that this group was the one that was spending time talking about the loss of a grocery store because of NYU construction. And it, what did that have to do with the larger issues that we were trying to wrestle with in terms of the quality of life and what arts contribute to our community? Right. And it's not, and our, it's not all our expertise. The, I'm sorry? It's not our expertise. Well, it's not your expertise. It waters down the significance of what, you know, look, I will say this, you know, people sometimes say to me, oh, you're adding a new member, they don't have expertise. People join to get expertise. But the key thing is that the world, the, you know, the sphere of arts and culture is too big and too important and has too many different aspects to it to, you know, bury it behind the other thing. As you pointed out, what happened is that there was this you know, focus on NYU and everything becomes about that. And that's, yeah, it's like NYU is doing art, then you will become involved in with NYU. If there's, you know, a public, as your parks, you could, you're going to, in, to be interacting with parks because of a installation. It's, you know, I'm, I mean, to me, arts is a defining cult, cultural feature of our local, our neighborhoods and communities. And the idea that it's buried is just wrong. Um, and I, and I, and from what I've observed, it's like, that's what's important to all of you folks, which is why you're here. So that's, that's the whole story. When um, I've been on the committee for 23 years now, and the reason why we added institutions to our committee is because there was nothing happening with art, not the other way around. So that's the real reason, because somebody had to hear about art. Um, we used to concentrate on institutions, a hospital, and uh, St. Vincent's Hospital, NYU, Cooper Union, all the institutions, and then the art. Oh, we're we're gonna where are we gonna put art? They decided to do that. Right. So what you are doing is basically reversing the roles that were established many years ago, which I have no problem with that. But I just wanted to say that for the record that the arts we were not doing much of anything with art. I mean. You're being led by this. You're being led by a working artist. How could you? You know, that's that's you know that's where you draw your strength from. And so this is not, something you know. It's not institutions will get all the attention it deserves, but it's going to be addressed from a perspective that actually deals with the impacts that it's having on the community. You know, whether what regardless of the type of institution. What, what institutions really deals with are the common types of influences and impacts that these entities have on CB2. But it's I, not, have to, sorry. I also have to say that I, felt, I feel that over the years, um, I have to give a lot of credit to Robin, who led a very great committee. She concentrated on the institution's part. We used to uh, have NYU come in and all the institutions come in periodically on the calendar. Every other month or whatever, three months, NYU had a report to us. And so I have to say, Robin did a great job with the institution's department. And I don't want that to be forgotten because she really did a fantastic job. It wasn't like institution was just a little side thing. No, she 
had control and did a great job managing our committee with institutions. Yes, yes, she did. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's, that is going to continue. Um, but this way, you now have the freedom to focus on what I think has been given short shrift, you know, because of, you know, look, a, a committee, you know, can only spend, has only so much time. People only have so much time to deal with things. And if you are going to be immersed in dealing with the institutions, whether it's NYU or anybody else, you're not going to have time to address arts and culture. There's just not, it's not possible. So, you know, I, I look, it's, it, this is like anything else. I, it's a judgment call based on what I see, based on the strengths of your leader, um, based on what I think is important and not being addressed. I mean, all, the fact is, is that community board, I mean, our, our, our groups and are not static. They evolve over time. They, combin they get their combinations and recombinations. Sometimes we create a brand new one. You know, uh, we move components around. Um, I really think that it is time to, um, to put, you know, arts and culture where it belongs, which is independent of the institutions. Thank you. So with that, you know, that kind of, we, we have to think about how to reshape a little bit. And I think like, you know, different times have different things. Like you said, at one point there wasn't a lot of art, more institution issue. Now I think we're, you know, coming back in from COVID that part, for example, like as an example, has so much energy, um, so much chaos and, you know, the opportunity of art. I mean, it's not weird that we bump into this initiative, if you call it that, that could, you know, start changing a little bit the energy of the park as not just like a hangout we kind of plays, you know, um, by having, you know, something come into where people become like a destination for that time, to be a really good energy. Um, and I, I thought about the week of what this means also. Um, and when we had um, our executive meeting, we constantly have the arts and culture a lot on the west side. We don't have a lot from the east side and lower side. So um, obviously you have the Whitney and all that, you know, they have a lot more everything. <laughs> and um, so it speaks a lot to like a lot of work that we should be doing and helping people to maybe connect on the Lower East Side because there's a lot of galleries. I mean, he's not exactly in CB2, but like a participant who has been in business for 20 years, like it's like, you know, Mormons, that kind of stuff. They moved into Chinatown right now. There's a lot of migration and there's a little tension actually with community of what that means about sports. Um, and that there's a, a lot of roles that we can start. And people don't know how to be in community boards either. So that could be a very, um, it could shape the kind of work that we can be involved. But like who, who can, you know, who finds about applications, right? I think notoriously the park or any of the speaking institutions when they put applications, I never hear them. Or they become daunting, right? I mean, so. <laughs> um, so I think that's something for us to talk about. And I think like the other thing that I've been talking about, how do we get this kind of thing and amplify it to the community that are looking for application? Right. And I, I think that's the part that I, in the two years I've been here, is like, I know that the Instagram thing is very hard to like, process what is that going to look but we should kind of like push that a little bit because when we have like great people come that have needs you know for applicants or to amplify we don't do that right you're talking about being some kind of connective tissue yeah because we have people that spend an hour and a half to like it could be a different phase and sometimes those spaces is when people want to get into it, right or when people like in different um, communities that we never heard about how to apply, which actually 
the part that I'm most concerned also is that budget thing for us now that we've shifted a little bit, you know, our role. Um, because I didn't have a grasp of the budgetary related to our community. And I think like we are signing on on things that have been done five years ago, which I'm not really sure what it is. Um, and even if it's signing on into budgets that go into library, which should be more thoughtful because now the libraries have a different role. It's again, one of those roles like, oh no, but people used to go or people didn't go. But now with the large population of immigrants moving in, that is a life to everything. Healthcare, arts, communication, applying for you know basic documentation. So um, we should be more thoughtful of how to like be involved in that budgetary instead of just signing. So doesn't that, don't libraries fall more into the institutions realm than right. the art realm? Yeah, so that, I was thinking about the library institution. I will point out that the reality of life is that there are just so many intersections. <laughs> and the fact that you, yes, libraries are institutions, but libraries are full of art. They are full of literary art. So the sense of it depends on the, you know, the angle you take, why are you connected? And it does, and you know, it quite could be quite possible that you will work with the institutions group now because on something like a library, it makes sense. But you will be approaching it from, you know, the arts side. So Good. many, so many big issues that we deal with are multi you know they don't just deal with one committee that's like there are just intersections all the time so the 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 part that you know for the for a while that i don't know how to like work within our our community borders like the amplification when people do come in for the uh, whether it's art or whatever and i think that that's kind of a needed thing if I could jump in for just a quick second, uh, you're here. Okay. Um, you need to jump in. The um, from my experience in doing this, uh, albeit not necessarily from this perspective, what you might, the way you might frame the question, like I was just saying, there are all sorts of intersections, not the least of which is the little box that we put our our responses to the Department of City Planning on for how the budget should be reorganized. Um, so it doesn't have an enormous box per second. So it's going to be these intersections where you're flying here. So if, if, if it were mine to do, I would be thinking in terms of outreach to the communities that you all serve and are aware of. Uh, institutional, arts institutions, not in a quad institution fashion. Um, but in terms of how do we support artists, both the accomplished ones and the up and coming ones, especially in an environment, let's face it, real estate in this area is not inclusive as it was 50 years ago, struggling artists who are trying to emerge, whether they be performance artists, teachers, uh, authors, or any other definition of artists that you can use. So I would be reaching out to organizations that support artists and surveying them, uh, helping them with questions about what are the needs of the community that we serve and the people who aspire to be a part of it. And then take that in and see which of those needs has a dollar sign connected with it. Some of them are going to be institutional in the sense that government doesn't support or the neighborhood doesn't support um, I, I read a film once about graffiti, and it was a pro graffiti um, documentary. And of course, there are community reactions to that. However, it is that you define the arts and culture of the area we serve and the people who aspire to be a part of it, and then those things that money can help. That's what our budget priorities, that's what your contribution to budget priorities. And then, in terms of the narrative statement, of um, what are the district needs as they relate to arts and culture. Uh, I would be thinking about the unmet needs that are driven by 
um, uh, members of the community that don't have access to full price museums, that don't have access, I don't think they're already in this area, but there may be schools that don't have full time word teachers, for example. I always prefer to schools. Um, it's your choice as to how to reach out and what that would be. But the best way to populate the part of the budget process is to draw it from the community rather than just the experiences uh, around the yeah. table. Rich though they are, they should be the vetting process. But if I were lying to do, I'd be reaching out to the organization you're aware of and asking them, who else should I talk to? And then you'll have a lot of input and you'll go from a blank piece of paper to having to compress too much in these small things. That's what Robin was doing. Excellent, excellent advice. Do we need that's it. That's what we have. We want to like to give us this overall and like reframe ourselves. Um, you know, one of the pieces that we put here in talk, for example, a lot of the parts that is um we've been to financially into like schools that don't have access is um with the arts and studios. So while they're not located in our community, they basically fund a lot of that structural work that, that is just left to the whole because of it. So would that be somebody that we would bring in to kind of like I, I just think that sometimes they, they haven't been able to to get community to extend. Their purpose, like they keep on funding it because the community doesn't know how to like self defend one. You know, I'm not sure if I'm expecting. Sometimes when you like give money, but yet you're not um, helping them with the structure so they can grow and be autonomous by building their own budget, then they just become dependent. So, if I might, what I might take from that is. And need of uh, children and even adults for artistic uh, expression and instruction, and then venues and opportunities for that. So I would focus on the residents and those residents on one hand, and the artists on the other, and then see where there are missed opportunities um, for uh, if it's funding that this opportunity is to fund. The presence of art instruction or art participation um, in the, in this community. Um, you have, you're right that there is a heavy overlap with schools, and to make it even more complicated, it's what happens during the school day. So, does a school have a full time art teacher? And by art, I'm saying either visual art, music, dance, movement, or lots of things that different schools will have a calling to. Um, and then there's also the after school programs, um, and that they're divided into fee for service and what's funded through the city from the Department of Youth and Community Development, DYCD. So, um, so there's, and that you would probably want to um, work in conjunction with the Schools and Education Committee so that you're not, in effect, doubling up efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a whole lot more, as you guys know much better than me. Of what can go on in an arts rich community than, than what's in a public school. Um, and the challenges of making that a reality in an affluent community with real estate values that continue to defy gravity, um, you you have a you have a, a task before you that, that would be a worthy way to express what you're trying to accomplish. To Mark's really point too, uh, just asking them for resources is not actually a bad thing because the worst they could say is we're good, leave us alone. Like they probably know the neighborhood better than we do in terms of what they're actually doing here and what they need. So it's a good thing. Right. Well, thank you so much for our eight first meeting. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Nice to be here. Bye, Kristen. Bye, Kristen. Bye, Kristen. Bye, Susan. Take care.